Hey, it's John and it's Mike. He's Mike. I'm John. How you doing, Mike? Great, John. Thanks. How are you? Good. I guess I'm yelling. I should stop yelling. Uh, here it is, uh, the weekend after Hobby Blues. Everything went well for you this weekend, you and Chris Sewell? Yeah, it was awesome. I had a blast. Yeah, He's good. just so easy to talk to. Yeah, he gives a uh, persona when he does his video as being very serious, but he just, he's such a casual and laid back guy, it seems behind the scenes, yep. you know? So, so uh, we're here to talk about uh, a little topic called it's me, not you. Um, and there's many athletes that we can get behind that maybe others don't. There's many athletes that we all disparage or they're dislike, I should say guys like, uh, uh, Draymond Green, I guess, maybe in uh, – does anybody like Draymond Green or Russell Westbrook or anybody like that, right? Alex Rodriguez. <laughs> Alex Rodriguez is a great example of that. I think it's universal, and it's funny because we see that in our – I don't ever see anybody on any of the uh, webs that say Alex Rodriguez's cards are under, undervalued. Uh, you, you just don't see that um, yeah. at all. Uh, and we're not here to talk about undervalued or underrated because uh, it's all that's all subjective, obviously. So uh, going to talk about some athletes that maybe uh, are universally liked, but maybe not necessarily liked by Mike and myself. And uh, I feel very strongly about this. And when I say it's it's me, not you, it means that uh, it's probably something I have inside of me that doesn't like a certain athlete. So, um, Mike, you want to lead us off here? You have a uh, you have a banger you want to roll out here? Yeah. First of all, I love doing this type of video where we talk baseball history and we can we can bring in cards. But my first one. And, and I, we're going to get a ton of hate in the comments here, by the way. Which, Cannot wait, man. Uh, br bring it on. But yeah. and I'm not going to touch on Jack Morris because I did the only video I've done that wasn't about cards on my channel was about how much I hate Jack Morris. And I'm not going to touch on that one again. What's his war? Uh, like 44. You haven't maybe. almost memorized, huh? Uh, yeah. And I mean, it's fine. It's my most hated video ever by far. <laughs> and it was fun to do. But I'm, I'm going to avoid Jack Morris today. I'm going to start okay. with Derek Jeter. And okay. I, I think Derek Jeter was a phenomenal player. First ballot Hall of Famer. I am not disputing that whatsoever. Uh, and he deserves that. So don't say he's the best. And part of being overrated, in my opinion, is not even his fault. It's not his fault he's overrated by the media and by fans. But he was also extraordinarily boring. Mm -hmm. He never, ever said anything interesting in his entire career. And now he's going to be a, a, a play by no, not a play by play guy, an analyst. He's mm -hmm. never going to say anything interesting. Yeah. Uh, A-Rod actually, uh, I have, I haven't really formed an opinion on him analyzing. He does all right, I guess, but uh, Jeter will be interesting. Um, and maybe some of that, that vanilla has to do with you know who else can pull that off in new york city i guess for that many years throughout your career right yeah you know you're the captain i guess for a reason right yeah and uh i don't know there's everything about him part of it's i'm a red sox fan i was a nomar guy mm -hmm. and i always in the 90s late 90s i thought nomar was better than jeter there's i i think it's arguable, but I felt at the time that Nomar was better. Jeter, of course, went on to have a significantly better career, not only with World Series, but just in numbers. And not, and not only with counting numbers, but just everything else. His, he had 10 amazing seasons, but he just drove me crazy. I hated him right. with a passion. And every time I say I hated a player... Somebody will inevitably comment, don't say hate. You should say you dislike him. I consider him the Taylor Swift of baseball. I've said that before. Ooh. Where okay. uh, talented, and obviously they're doing nothing wrong and they're very successful, but I just can't, uh, can't embrace it. But Jeter, it seems to be uh, interesting that you say that because I see a lot of stuff, whether it's on uh, Twitter or Facebook, I see a lot of, 
that that question pops up a lot is Jeter overrated. Uh, so there's, and I don't know what, I don't know whether that's pure haters or whether that's people questioning their, their own baseball judgment. Um, but it's, I've seen that a lot, but I've also seen as a, um, part-time YouTube or part-time uh, eBay seller, his cards go, uh, even his, his nondescript cards go like wildfire. Uh, yeah. He, he's very popular. He sells and all that stuff. So I guess it's common to have a little bit of backlash when you're that pure and that, that good. I mean, he can even navigate, you know, the dating scene in New York city without, um, having to wear an asbestos suit. That's for sure. Right. He yeah. out of a lot of relationships without, uh, without a scratch. Yeah. And I respect, I really respect a guy like Jeter who, in New York City, played for 20 years, roughly, and never had a scandal. Yeah. Not that I can recall, anyway. Yeah. Like, I strongly, strongly dislike LeBron James, but he's never had a scandal. That's pretty darn yeah. impressive. Yeah, I mean, I would say, I would say, you know, Jeter had great parenting, right? I think that's part of his story. But LeBron only had one parent, and it was a strong parent, so you can't say it was great parenting by a pair of parents, you know, uh, LeBron had great parenting by one parent. So, uh, different circumstances, but, uh, LeBron, man, I want to get behind him, but what gets me, what gets me about LeBron and he isn't part of the, uh, main attraction here is the LeBron V Jordan debate. I'm always going to be on team Jordan. Oh, always and forever. I don't even have LeBron as my number two of all time. Who's your I, number I, two of all time? Um, the, the hick from French lick. No birds. I don't know. Right around number 10, but I would put Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Bill Russell, number two, Steph Curry. I'd Mm. probably put ahead of LeBron. LeBron would be fifth or sixth all time for me. All right. Well, I got you. And that's really good. Yeah. It's not hating on LeBron. It's not, it's not. I, I just I, I LeBron is a casualty of the uh, the goat argument and Jordan will always win that. Um, so that's yeah. why any kind of bad taste I have in my mouth is because of that. And it's obviously not LeBron. Um, I'm going to throw one out here where you'll probably disagree with me on this one. But uh, okay. and he's a very controversial chap, but uh, Kurt Schilling. OK. Kurt Schilling. And I'm not and this is not a uh, look at that autograph. Uh, it's not a uh, matter of his post playing career uh, situation because I, I'm, I'm, I'm a firm believer to me, it's black and white. If you're, if you're getting paid by a club, you need to kind of keep your mouth shut or you need to keep, keep, you need to, to be in line with public sentiment. You can't just be too rogue, right? Like a guy like Trevor Bauer or something like that. Once you're done, do whatever you want. So it has nothing to do with that. But my distaste comes from uh, this guy played longer for the Phillies than anybody, oddly enough, but uh, traded a bunch of times. uh, Universally recognizes one of the least favorite teammates of uh, many teams that he played on. I've said it before. There was a comparison with Randy Johnson and somebody's book. I think uh, the baseball 100 where it said, uh, nobody wanted to be around Randy Johnson on days he pitched because he was miserable. And uh, nobody wanted to be around Kurt Schilling on days he didn't pitch because he was miserable. So um, kind of tells you everything you need to know about that. Traded five times maybe. Uh, a warmonger for sure. The guy could the guy could war like a uh, few of his generation. Uh, successful. I just, for some reason, I just, the thing of not being a good teammate has always kind of rubbed me the wrong way uh, with him. Everywhere he's gone, it seems. Yeah. Uh, so, first of all, I, I'm with you on all of that. Uh, for, and, and you mentioned Baseball 100, 100. We should mention that that was written by Joe Posnanski, the Very greatest cool. sports writer in America. I have the Baseball 100 autographed. Uh, it's not in reach here. It's a great book. Uh, I love great Joe book. Posnanski. I read him yeah. every day. Uh, greatest sports writer and he's wrong yeah. sometimes, by the way, before you put him too far oh, up on the pedestal. He's, of he course, wrong but, yeah. Yeah. they're always wrong. Yep. Not, not always, but all <laughs> of them are wrong sometimes. Um, Schilling, I as a again, as a Boston fan, I hold him 
very close to my heart as a player because of the 2004 World Series. And, you know, he said he was, there, there's a lot of bluster in sports. Like uh, Jimmy Butler for the Miami Heat calls his shots and he either follows through and he uh, does what he says he's going to do or he doesn't and people forget that he called a shot. And Schilling <laughs> said, I'm coming to Boston to win the first World Series in 86 years. And he did it. And if he hadn't, nobody would have remembered. Mm-hmm. It's brilliant marketing as a player. And, he, you know, he obviously, Pedro Martinez was the leader of that team, but Schilling had the most amazing pl- playoff career as a pitcher, maybe of anybody. I agree that he's detestable and loathsome as a teammate. And nobody liked him probably until 2004 and then never again after that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's, you know, it, and again, I want to be clear. It has nothing to do with his post playing career because yep. uh, there's a lot of players like that and that's their prerogative to, to be who they want to be. And they, you know, it's probably best to be who you are yeah. Uh, as opposed to us finding out later on, which may be one of my guys further down the list here, but uh, it's, it's be yourself. Always. Schilling's nickname in the clubhouses was Red Light because the red light, I don't remember exactly what it was, but when the red light was on, he was going to be talking. He just never uh, shut up. Gotcha. And they, uh, he just, his teammates hated him for his entire career. And he would just say, I don't care, right. which I guess is kind of respectable. But at some point, you got to try to be a good teammate. Yeah, for sure. Especially, you know, baseball, where you were 162 games where you're clocked in and then however many days and you're traveling together. So, yeah, you know, yeah, no, you don't have, uh, I lived on a bus with 11 other sweaty dudes, uh, and worked with them. So I get it. But when you're in close quarters like that for eight months out of the year, it's, you gotta, you, you can't be a, a, a Richard. That's for sure. You want to, uh, go with your number two there for us and number yep. two, either it, it's not ascending or descending. It's just, your second one yeah before i do though jeter i would love to have his rookie sp card with an autograph on it so just to be clear i I hate him but i still want that card autograph are you putting that out to the audience do you want to no 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 i just dress too or like uh, lebron i would never spring for his rookie autograph because it's hundreds of thousands of dollars right but jeter i could get that for well it's probably not a reasonable price but no i as much as i hate him i still want his rookie card and uh, another, unlike, unlike Jack Morris, I don't want it. <laughs> oh, man, I cannot wait, cannot wait for you to open that present under the Christmas tree this year. Oh no! Uh, is Jeter still in the in the hobby by by any chance? He's uh, part owner of Arena. I'm going to rephrase my question: Is Jeter still in the hobby uh, by any chance? Is Arena still in the hobby? Is oh uh, yeah, uh, yeah, because Pac Man still, because I think Pac Man's a part owner of arena too, but he's still hawking the arena wares. Okay. Gotcha. All right. Uh, what do you number got? Two. Next? Yeah. Number two. I've got, I've got Jim Rice and here I am a Red Sox fan bringing Jim sense. Rice to the table as somebody I never liked. And I, and I think about this sometimes and I was born in 79. Jim Rice peaked 79 uh, ish. Let's see. Is he had a great, second half of the 70s 75 yeah yeah and he was fourth in mvp in 83 and he was third in 86 but by the time i remember baseball starting in 87 and he was terrible and he played for three more years 87 88 89 and he was terrible and i just remember getting so mad at jim rice every time and he i hate to break this to you but he if you look at his stats he was overrated and didn't deserve to get into the hall of fame either he had three really good seasons yeah i mean that's weird that's a good call out but yeah i got you so the question i ask you then uh was it his personality because he was a very quiet gentleman right so jeter i i hate because partially because he was boring Mm-hmm. Jim Rice was also boring. He's a terrible sportscaster on Nesson, analyst, whatever you call them. Oh, he's uh, he's still in the game? 
Uh, last I knew, la- I think last year is when I really last watched him. And he's been on for years and years and years. Huh. He used to be on with Eckersley. Right. Uh, and Eck was great. Uh, but Jim Rice, like Jeter, never said anything interesting. Yeah, I mean, I can't imagine a guy who who I wouldn't know what his voice was in his playing days. I don't recall seeing an interview or hearing an interview, and I can't believe they'd put a microphone in front of him post career. He kind of reminds me of personality wise of of Eddie Murray, um, right? Eddie Murray was kind of went through a long career, no scandals, but no no controversy at all. But uh, I wouldn't expect Eddie Murray to climb into the announcer's booth uh, post career. By the way. Jim Rice had four consecutive years of 100 or more RBIs in the 80s, so he he did all right. He wasn't horrible. Almost a 300 career hitter, right? Uh, yep, yeah. yep. He wasn't terrible. Yeah, he was. In my opinion, he's a borderline Hall of Famer who falls short. Okay, I got so you. I'm not saying that Jim Rice was a bad ball player. He right. was great. I got you. Yeah, uh, and and that's a uh, interesting pseudo self loathing Red Sox fan thing there too because I would not have expected that from you at all um, yeah that's that's interesting but I think uh, it has to do with zero personality or pizzazz too uh, now any of your elders were they on board the rice wagon look at that By the 76 way, rice with the autograph yeah it's a good looking card TTM autograph any of my elders I, I think if I were to ask my dad my dad would probably watch this he was a big Rice fan, I'm guessing. Okay. He was a huge Red Sox fan in the 70s. Yaz was his guy. Uh, our guy. Uh, our guy. I'll share him with your dad. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I, I have a big Yaz run of all of his tops cards from, the, from his career. But yeah, Jim Rice, I know he's very popular in Boston for his five amazing seasons or whatever. His five amazing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, seasons of 100 or more RBIs. Yeah. He did ground into a lot of double plays, though. I'll give you that. He was a, a GD peer, as they say on baseball reference. Uh, yeah. I I like the fact that it was Williams, Yaz, and Rice for however many decades, five, six decades or whatever. That's pretty cool. And, and then who? Greenwell. That's right. Okay. Uh, My guy. I loved Greenwell. Yeah, Greeny. Uh, you would. I mean, won you would. In 88. Yeah, like you're. Senko stole it from him. He's definitely a, a, a your generation kind of guy. I can see that for sure. And he had a, you know, people say he was a disappointment. Greenwell had a nice career. You know, he wasn't, he didn't have rice numbers, but he had a, a decent career. I think he hit close to 300, right? He finished 303 is what he finished with. So, uh, yep. yeah, he had a, a very nice career. career. Yeah. Yep. Um, number two for me now, uh, boy, I, this is one that makes no sense to anybody. And I, I can take the heat, though, but uh, Gary Carter, who by all metrics is, is probably the nicest guy that ever played in the game. I, I doubt you could find somebody on uh, any kind of baseballpersonalityreference.com, uh, find somebody with a higher war than Gary Carter. Uh, would you agree with that? Gary Carter essentially seemed like he was perfect. Yeah. And he's, again, he's before my time. Really, he started in '75, I think, and I was born. I didn't Late start '74. Don't, he had a cup yeah, of okay. coffee. I don't but, remember yeah. right. watching baseball until '87, when he was definitely on the tail end of his career. He had five more seasons, maybe. Right, but now, I yeah. loved Gary Carter. Yeah, he was uh, one of my problems in life. I'm sorry, Mike. Go ahead. And he was on the '86 Mets team. So, yeah. uh, but I also don't remember that World Series, thankfully. Yeah, incidentally, he had almost uh, 24 more war than uh, Jim Rice, which is crazy. Yep. I, part, part of my, uh, I've, I've been through some, I've self analyzed myself uh, with this decision uh, for a very long time. It isn't a new thing, but part of it is subconsciously that he played on the Expos and he played on the Mets. So in the seventies, the Expos were always nipping at the Phillies heels and mm. uh, Carter was part of that great young team, Andre Dawson, Ellis Valentine, Warren Cromartie and uh, Gary Carter, of course. So I think that's part of it. And then of course, uh, NL East, uh, he moves over from Montreal to the Mets. So it was kind of like a very, very long time of, 
being, uh, you know, uh, the arch enemy of the Phillies, I would guess. Um, that, that's how I feel about Edgar Martinez. Mm-hmm. He was always like, he must have batted 800 against the Red Sox in the square. At least that's what it seemed like as a kid. <laughs> right. Yeah. And again, this is a, and, and rest in peace, Gary Carter, by the way, but this yeah. is a guy who you can't, you can't find anything bad about it. And on a, on a team filled with kind of, I'll use the word bad characters or, or dicey characters, you know, those mid to late eighties Mets, you know, there was some shena- definitely some shenanigan- shenanigans in that clubhouse. He was the guy that apparently led by example, you know, and uh, of course was the, always the adult in the room, I guess, for uh, a crazy, crazy Mets team. Yep. Uh, yeah, so he's uh, obviously deserving of the World Series. He he racked up all sorts of great numbers, both uh, with the gear on and and uh, with a bat in his hand. So, yeah, I, I I feel I feel guilty about that, and that's where I guarantee it has nothing to do with Gary Carter. It's just for some reason that smile. I feel like, and this will tie into my next guy. I feel like when you're smiling that much and you're that handsome and you, you have a perm, which he had in the seventies, like you, there's gotta be some sort of skeletons in your closet. And that didn't seem to be the case with Gary Carter. I went a lifetime trying to find those skeletons and there were none. So. Yeah. Uh, and, and I think if, if Gary Carter were alive and playing now, you were in his twenties, the media would be looking for those skeletons. And I, I don't yeah. think, that existed in the 70s, 80s, and even in, into the 90s, where the media was eager to find dirt on players. Until Just, until Mark McGuire's fateful interview in the locker. Uh, yeah. But you're right. Then it seemed to turn on the worm right there, right? Yeah. But Andrew Stent. What was that? How would you pronounce that? And, Andrew. Anyway. Andrew. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, uh, yeah it's... Uh, it's it's a shame he left us too soon, but uh, Gary Carter again. It's me, not you. What do you have? What's your next one up there? Reggie Jackson, my, my friend James is a huge Reggie Jackson fan. Every time I have a Reggie Jackson card, like I'm going through my childhood collection, and I'll find a Reggie card. I give them to him. I don't want him, although I do have his rookie card, and I'll keep his rookie card. <laughs> I don't want him. <laughs> I, um, I I don't know. I just never liked Reggie. He was great. He was a big power hitter, hit a lot of home runs, but he, I don't know. I always felt like he was overrated. Um, he just didn't do much other than hit home runs. Oh, Michael. Uh, he was the greatest player of the 1970s. Wow. Five, five rings. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I, I, I understand that, but. He was the uh, stirrer. He was a straw that stirred the drink. Uh, they said about him, "There's not enough mustard in the world to cover that hot dog." Right? This guy was the greatest. He took everything on his shoulder. Just one shoulder. He didn't need to do. He didn't need to carry it on both shoulders. Just one shoulder. He carried everything. He was the hitting Kurt Schilling. He was not the hitting Kurt Schilling. <laughs> Kurt, Sch- he was not. He was loved by his teammates. No, well, I sh- I shouldn't say that. I'm saying in Oakland, he was loved by his teammates. Um, what happened in New York? Well, come in on. Anaheim. Who, who do you got the Anaheim? He was nothing wrong in Anaheim, but New York, you had <laughs> Billy Martin and uh, and George Steinbrenner. I mean, what did, and Reggie Jackson? What, oh, what and it wasn't Reggie's that? fault. No, I mean it's it wasn't Reggie's fault. Reggie uh, got robbed a few times. Gun pulled on him a few times and walked away unscathed with all his gear. Um, so I disagree with you. Um, red, yeah, yeah. I, I think, and I, I, there will be a yellow card, uh, shown to you, uh, about this, but Reggie hit a lot of home runs. Reggie knocked in a lot of players and Reggie scored a lot of runs. You know, played a lot of games, played a lot of games. Lot of- Accumulated a lot of statistics. Strike out the, the all time yeah. leader in strikeouts. Somebody's got to do it, man. Well, what uh, would you rather do? Would you rather strike out or or pop out or whatever? I guess if you put the ball in play, you got a chance to score some runners. But uh, yeah, he was he he was. Uh, I, I I love Reggie Jackson. There's no doubt about that. He's from my hometown, uh, and I I think he 
I've, I've, I've always, I don't know if you and I have ever had this discussion and I know you certainly don't watch my show, but the seventies, the, the, the change that happened in the seventies throughout stadiums, uh, the way the game was played, uh, all that fun stuff, you know, AstroTurf, grass, uniforms, DH, say whatever you want. He he was there through it out through through it all and 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 thrived through all those changes and chaos and turmoil, free agency, the whole thing, right? So uh, he was he he was nonplussed by any of the the stuff that happened in the seventies. You know, he were two probably the two most controversial owners maybe in history. He played for them back to back. I would think. March shot. No, uh, Mar- no, that's a good one. But uh, Charlie, yeah. Charlie Finley. Uh, right. Remember when Raleigh Fingers was a Red Sox player? Your dad will because it lasted no, for I about don't. three hours. He had yeah. pictures taken in his uniform and all that stuff, right? Charlie Finley was selling his players constantly and, and trying to kill any kind of team chemistry and stuff like that. And then we all know, you know, about George Steinbrenner, but. He thrived uh, in the chaos, and I I like people that will run into burning buildings, Mike. That's just my thing. The the story about how he got involved with Upper Deck in 89 is classic. Um, And his role in Naked Gun, right? Was it Naked Gun? Yeah, it was Naked Gun. (laughs) Classic. Classic. Yeah, and, you know, we talk about – you talk about his role in the hobby with the uh, first – in pack auto right which is yep. which is pretty neat i mean he, he had definitely jumped the shark by then but it was uh you know obviously he was done playing but it was it was neat neat to see i have uh nothing but respect for reginald martinez jackson that's for sure somebody will break that strikeout record i guarantee you if these guys yeah, sign 15 year contracts now man yeah yeah they're striking so, out a lot yeah who's your number three and then we'll Number get to three, some, some no, honorable mentions. Yeah, there's no surprise here. It's it's uh, Steve Garvey. Uh, Steve Garvey, uh, unlike Gary Carter, does have skeletons in his closet. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just don't like people who appear to be perfect when you know there's shenanigans uh, off the court. Uh, Great hair, uh, though. Yeah, and there's. <laughs> Yeah, I was talking about hair. I heard a story where his teammates, and again, another guy not beloved by his teammates on some accounts, they pushed him into a pool uh, when he was walking by. And of course, my first thought was, but what about a cell phone? Of course, this is in the early 70s. There were no cell phones. He came out. I think Tommy Lasorda told the story. He came out of the pool. His hair hadn't changed at all. So great hair on his forearms and his head. But uh, there's... His team Don Sutton didn't like him, and a lot of his other teammates didn't like him. So uh, I don't like him. He pops up. I'm sorting tens of thousands of cards on the other side of the wall there, and I swear every other one is a Steve Garvey, either a Padres card or a Dodgers card. But he was part of one of the greatest infields of all time, probably. Uh, definitely one of the longest tenured infields, that Dodgers infield of the 70s. So, By the way, Nobody has ever stolen an MVP award because of how much they were liked by the media, the way Steve Garvey did in 1974. <laughs> yeah, I mean, let's look at that. I'm going to look at that MVP voting right here. Uh, Mike okay. Schmidt, who had one of the best seasons in in the 70s, finished in sixth place that yeah. season. He led the league. He had, nine point, he had twice as much war. Yeah. As Mike Schmidt did, 36 dingers, 116 RBI. Uh, Mike Schmidt had twice as much as Garvey. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's what I meant. Yeah. Outslugged him, outdid everything. I, you, you've got a great point there. Uh, there was a lot of people more deserving. Uh, Jim Wynn would be one, and Johnny Bench would be another. And then, you know, Mike Joe Marshall, Morgan. Joe Morgan. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, uh, yeah, that, that's a great point. And uh, whatever they called him, Captain America, or whatever they called him, but I, I there's something. Uh, he he went on to have a few uh, stressful times later on in his career when he got engaged and uh, apparently knocked up a few women at the t- at the same time. So his wedding shower to one woman, one woman uh, kind of doubled as a uh, baby shower for a few other women. So he knocked it all out, <laughs> saved on the catering. Uh, by that but i what do you think of steve Sufficient. garvey he's another guy from the 70s you might not care too much about but there was something about that guy i just didn't like 
Well, he was on my list too. Uh, he, I had him right up there as a guy. Uh, I didn't really know Steve Garvey as a, as a kid, mm-hmm. but looking back on his stats now, what exactly was he good at? He, he Red had light. a good base, good batting average, mm-hmm. very little power, didn't steal bases. And he was a first baseman yeah. for most of his career. And he didn't hit for power, which is why was he so popular? Just because he was well-spoken, big smile. good. Yeah, he was. Yeah. Yes. Because you know why everybody else in the, including the women had sideburns in the seventies and stuff like that. And he was Mr. Clean. Right. So he was the, I guess he was, that's a good point. He personified, uh, America, clean America, I guess, uh, after the hippies had taken over. So, and, uh, just, I think it was Sammy Thunder who just picked up a Steve Garvey autographed rookie card for $15. <laughs> One of his, I think it's his 72 PSA 10 just sold for like 30 K. Uh, one of the auctions, well, it's auction or something done, like yeah. that. Yeah. That's I mean, 72 is tough for many reasons, all that stuff, yeah. but he's, uh, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of, uh, people banging the drum for him for the hall of fame. Uh, I can name you 10 more that deserve to get in before him. Um, you know, he set the, and I don't know if he still holds it, but I, the, the national league consecutive games streak, yep. uh, and stuff like that. He was durable. Uh, you know, he was durable. That's all we could. That's all I'm going to, that's the best thing I could say about Steve Garvey. Yep. And it's you, you real quick, you mentioned Mike Schmidt. Now Mike Schmidt was interesting because in Philadelphia, he was under valued to the fan base for many, many years while he played. And then he had, there was some sort of uh, warming or thawing of relations uh, at one point. Uh, he's beloved in Philly, I think, probably like no other athlete now, but his playing days were tough. I uh, had a father who despised him and I had a brother who loved him. So uh, dinner tables, uh, conversations were kind of difficult at times. Uh, but my dad called him a bum, but there's no doubt uh, he's appreciated now. Yep. That's my, that's my, monologue on mike schmidt yeah all-time great so what do you got you got some any, any of these uh honorable mentions that were dishonorable dishonorable mentions this yeah so i've got three i have pete rose who right. i uh, when i was a kid could not stand him i thought he was wildly overrated now looking back even though he was mostly a singles hitter was still a great player mm-hmm but I just, I couldn't stand him as a kid and I can't anymore. I mean, he's even as an adult, he's just such a loud mouth. And that's, I don't know. My next one is Bryce Harper. Okay. Just, uh, that hurts a little bit. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. He just always seems so angry and unhappy. (laughs) Sorry. I was laughing at myself. I thought you were referring to me. (laughs) (laughs) And Bryce Harper is a great player. Although very inconsistent, especially in the first half of his career, seemed like he'd have an MVP year and then terrible year and then an MVP year. Yeah, up and down. He seems to be, though, uh, one of those um, stats that does not show up anywhere. Is it like he's a, you know, they used to use the term clubhouse guy for uh, players that couldn't contribute elsewhere, but he's one of those guys I think that really holds the team together, especially a younger team, maybe in Philadelphia. I think he really, uh, he's really the, the soul of that team. And, and you need, you need a player that's the soul of a team um, to be successful. I think my last one, have I mentioned Jack Morris, Jack Morris? uh, I think he had a 44 war. You said, right. Oh, did did we talk about that? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, But then I think, where did that come from? Talk to me where that, tell me where that came from. It can't be just because of his hall of fame induction. Um, Is he really, is he really the worst guy in the hall of fame? No, 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 no. No? He's not the worst. He just happens to be the worst in the last 25 years. Okay. Harold Baines, maybe. But Harold Baines was a nice guy. Jack Morris was a notorious jerk okay. throughout his career and after his career. Okay. Did he not TTM you? <laughs> Is this part of that? I know. I'm telling you, I don't want his rookie card. I don't want any of his cards. I don't want them autographed. I don't want them unautographed. Right. 
That's uh, yeah. I mean, players that he was a guy that was always always seemed surly, right? So he never quite endeared himself. I, I wonder what kind of teammate he was. Have you done any research on that? He was widely hated. Oh, yeah. I, I did teammates. the video. Okay. Did the video on why I watched I hate that. Jack Morris, and I, yeah, I don't pretty remember. sure I talked about how much his teammates hated him. Okay, interesting. If not, I'm he's totally part of a... up right now. <laughs> he was part of a couple interesting teams. Obviously, the '84 Tigers, right? The Tigers, and, yeah. And then had the, a great offense. That's why he won so many games. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, going back to Rose, Rose is one of those rare birds that. As time goes by, I despise more, which is interesting because normally you you warm up to to uh, people. But uh, Rose brought Philly their first baseball world championship, or the Phillies their first championship, and uh, they wouldn't have done it without him. But uh, as time goes on, I, you know, the guy becomes more and more despicable. I think, though, playing days wise, he would do anything for his team, whether it's left field, first base, third base. Uh, you know, Sparky Anderson, I read a story where Sp- Sparky Anderson had to figure out a, a way to tell Pete Rose he was going to play third base. And he just said, Pete, this is the best way to help the team. And then Pete was all for it instead of just switching him. Right. So guy that got a lot out of not a lot of talent and call him a singles hitter, but he got a lot out of not a lot of talent and uh, involved in two of the best uh, uh physical incidents in baseball history i think in the 70 yep. all-star game and in the the playoffs against the the mets but but i can see that and i think you're not alone i don't know uh how many pete rose defenders there are left uh in the oh, world either. i feel like they're i mean he's signing a million autographs a year so people love him yeah i guess i guess yeah i uh you know i guess honorable unmentionables maybe uh, another unpopular one would be Willie Mays for me, just because I think Willie Mays would just seem like a miserable guy. Uh, mm-hmm. I think he had, I, I, I think I just said this this weekend. He, this, we always talk about people getting the most out of their talent or not enough out of their talent. Willie Mays had maybe the most talent ever given to a human being in baseball. And he got more out of his talent than any, you know, he was able to, capitalize on the talent he had which is uh also a record but i just i grew up in an age where he was just miserable a miserable signer and just a miserable man at any kind of autograph sessions and stuff like that and i look at the legacy he left of bobby bonds wasn't known as a great uh uh gregarious man uh barry bonds his godson certainly isn't known as that so i wonder uh you know if he had a lot to do with uh a few other guys being just miserable dudes, but who knows? Tremendously talented. I will not uh, deny anybody who says he was the greatest baseball player that ever lived. I won't say that, but I would not deny anybody from saying that because he probably was. He had everything he and he used it. You know? I, I, the baseball 100 says he was, and I agreed before reading the baseball 100. Uh, yeah. All time greatest. Although Shohei Otani could get there. Yeah. I was just thinking, what could Willie Mays not do? And, and then you say Shohei, obviously he couldn't pitch, right? So yep. I watched Shohei Otani. I've seen him twice live this year. Uh, almost hit for the cycle one game. I saw him, and I, I've said this before too, I saw him reach base on a catcher's interference, steal second, run the third on the overthrow, and then score on a sacrifice fly. And that's, you know, that's your pitcher doing that stuff. You know, yep. Pretty incredible. When I was a kid, pitchers put on these big puffy jackets when they yep. – uh, when they went to first base and pretty much checked out for the rest of the inning, unless somebody hit a home run. So, yeah. Tom Glavin did that much later than anybody else. Yeah. The big starter Actually, jacket. The Braves starters did. I remember Glavin and Maddox doing it a lot. And I never saw anybody else really doing that in the nineties. <laughs> and it was 95 degrees in Atlanta. And they yeah. had their big puffy jackets on at first base. Well, that's that. That's, uh, I think we did all right. I think we, it was kind of cathartic for us. Maybe, maybe we got some of our uh, inner anger out or, or uh, resentment out at some of these ball players. Um, yeah. You were wrong on one of them, but that's okay. You're allowed to be, <laughs> but uh, I was probably wrong on all three. <laughs> so it doesn't matter. Yeah. Uh, I want to know what other people think. So throw it in the comments. Let us know where we were wrong and why you now hate us both. 
Yeah, and we can't wait to to hear how we were wrong. And and uh, don't forget to check out Mike's channel, uh, Junk Wax Hero. Uh, be careful if you tweet with him attached to your tweet because there's some a couple of those guys over there on Twitter, a couple of Junk Wax Hero slash heroes, and it can get confusing. So don't want to show up at the prom with the wrong date. So that's yeah. all I'm saying. So your channel, that '70s card show. Uh, are you still putting out videos? I have so many great ideas that I want to do. Um, I, I have two new roommates right now, so I have to kind of lay low. Oh. My wife's uh. parents moved in. So, uh, so yeah, a lot of stuff going on here. Uh, thanks, everybody. Appreciate it. Mike, thank you. Uh, thanks, John. Avita Sane, as they say over there in Germania. <laughs>